All right, guys, so today I present to you my top five bottled and bond bourbons I am drinking right now. So some of these bottles I actually had to acquire outside of the state because they are not sold here, unfortunately. Um, but all of the bourbons I'm about to present to you um, can be enjoyed neat, on ice. They all make for a great cocktail. And uh, one of the best parts about these bottled and bond bourbons is they're not going to gouge your wallet. All right, guys, so the list of the five bottled and bond bourbons that I chose came from a, uh, a group of 10. I narrowed it down to these five. Um, you know, cost is a, definitely a major factor in that. But then also how well um, they, you know, they drink neat on ice. Uh, a big one is how well they hold up in a cocktail as well. I think all of these are absolutely delicious and make a fantastic cocktail. Definitely excited to show you guys my top five bottled and bond bourbons I'm drinking right now, guys. So without further ado, let's go. All right, guys, so number one on the list is Old Grandad Bottled and Bond out of the Jim Beam Distillery. Uh, the mash bill on this guy is 63% corn, 27% rye, 10% malted barley, and can be found in most stores uh, for anywhere between $20 to $25. So for those of you who don't know, the picture on the front of the Old Grandad bottles is actually Basil Hayden. Uh, Basil Hayden was a master distiller in Maryland who made his way to Kentucky in the late 18th century to start producing bourbon with a high rye mash bill that is still around to this day. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and get into a few tasting notes with you here real quick. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely, absolutely one of my favorites. Rye spices, a lot of like lemon, orange, citrus. On the back end, like cinnamon red hot candies, um, starts to produce like this little uh, like dark fruit, almost like a, a plum sitting there on the middle of the palate and into the finish. Um, again, old granddad, uh, bottle and bond, definitely one of my staples um, in my bar. Again, I can drink this neat. Um, I prefer not to drink it on ice, but if, you know, if I decided to, I would. Um, and as far as a cocktail for this one, I think this makes um, for a great whiskey sour. I think the citrus and uh, some of those cinnamon red hots kind of offset um, some of that sourness that comes from the whiskey sour. Um, so that would be my recommendation for a cocktail. All right, guys. So coming in at number two on the list is JTS Brown Bottled and Bond. Now, this one was produced out of Heaven Hill, has a mash bill of 78% corn, 10% rye, and 12% malted barley. Um, you can find this one on shelves anywhere between $15 to $20, which is an absolute steal for what this is. So JTS Brown dates back to the mid 1850s and it was built by John Thompson Street Brown who founded Old Forester in 1870 with his half brother George Garvin Brown. All right guys let's go ahead and get to a few tasting notes. Cheers. Yeah so on this one you get golden raisins um, like a slight uh, cherry note. Nice vanilla, nice caramel, uh, not a ton of rye spices on this one. Definitely get like a um, like a candy corn aspect on this as well, kind of on the on the front of the palate. Again, that that cherry kind of sits on the middle of the palate. Uh, just absolutely, um, absolutely delicious bottle and bond bourbon here. Um, this used to be um, one of my favorite bottle and bond bourbons um, a couple years back. Again, very difficult for me to find. Um, as far as uh, a cocktail that I would recommend uh, that this plays well in would be a John Collins. I think that this offers, again, some of those um, those really nice sweet notes, but then there's also just like this little bit of, um, of darkness to it there as well. You do get um, a hint of like um, so like a peanut, like almost like a honey roasted peanut with a, that Heaven Hill profile. Um, I think it plays very well um, in a John Collins, so I definitely recommend you try that cocktail. All right, guys, next on the list is Early Times Bottled and Bond. Uh, this one was produced out of Brown Foreman. Uh, the mash bill on this guy is 79% corn, 11% rye, and 10% malted barley. This one can be found on shelves uh, for, a, it's a little more pricey, between that $25 to $30 range, which still really isn't bad for what it is. So during the 1940s, Early Times proudly introduced their Bottled and Bond bourbon to satisfy the hardworking men and women of that era. A decade thereafter, uh, this became one of America's top-selling bourbons. 
All right, guys, let's get into a few tasting notes here. Yeah, sweet caramel on this one. Um, almost again like that candy, uh, almost like that candy corn. Um, nice, rich, like vanilla fudge. And then kind of on the back end, you get hit with this just little bit of rye spice that kind of flows through. And you get this like this little bit of of leather, a um, little bit of leather, maybe a little bit of pipe tobacco that follows through into the finish. Um, one of my favorite cocktails to make uh, with this is just an old fashioned. I think it, I think it makes a fantastic old fashioned. Um, I do recommend that you try it. Um, I, I know that you know typically with with some of the old fashions you don't get um, you don't get a lot of uh, you know kind of darker flavors and, and stuff like that. But when you when you add this in, you know, you do get some of that, you know, some of that leather does show up and some of that, um, that pipe tobacco does show up on like the back end. Definitely recommend uh, an old fashioned here with this early times bottled and bond. All right, guys, next on the list is Evan Williams White Label Bottled and Bond. Uh, this one is probably a staple in most people's bars as it is mine. Produced out of Heaven Hill, the mash bill on this guy is 78% corn, 10% rye, and 12% malted barley. Uh, you can find this one on shelves probably cheaper than anything else. Uh, this is between the $15 and $20 range. So Evan Williams set up his distillery on the banks of the Ohio River in 1783 and became known as Kentucky's first distiller of bourbon. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into a few tasting notes here. Yeah, you can never go wrong with this one. A lot of sweetness to this, which uh, which I really like. A lot of uh, nice vanilla caramel um, like, like a caramel drizzle, you get a little bit of that honey roasted peanut. Um, there's definitely like a little bit of a uh, little bit of citrus there that sits on the sides of the palate. Um, again, very easy to drink again, a very sweet profile. Um, so the cocktail that I chose for this would be a Manhattan. Um, I think that, uh, you know, if, if you like, uh, if you like sweetness, I think by putting this in a Manhattan, I think you're getting like the ultimate sweet cocktail if you have a sweet tooth like i do i definitely prefer this in there um you do kind of get some of those offset flavors um like with that that honey roasted peanut um that that comes from this guy but then you do get that sweet caramel that sweet vanilla um like that that vanilla fudge that sits in there um but that kind of like honey roasted um peanut aspect sits very well in a manhattan all right guys so last but not least on my top five bottle of bond bourbons i'm drinking right now is the old forester 1897 out of Brown Foreman, uh, mash bill on this guy is 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. It can be found in most stores between $40 and $50, which is probably on the high end for some of these bottled and bond bourbons. So Old Forester Bottled and Bond was created uh, to honor a watershed moment in bourbon history, and that was the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into a few tasting notes here. Yeah, so on this one, you get um, this nice, rich vanilla that flows from the, from the front to the middle of the palate. You start to pick up some um, some darker fruits there towards the, the middle of the palate and into the back. Some raisins, some dates. And then, like, as the finish kind of flows through, you do get this, like, this sweet oak um, characteristic to it. Not a ton of rye spice, but you do kind of get that, that flavor of uh, some of that rye there that sits on the middle of the palate. A little bit of, uh, like, a lemon bar. Um, there with that citrus on the sides of the palate. Um, now, as far as cocktails for this one, um, this would th this actually holds up great in um, a bourbon sidecar. Uh, I think some of those uh, some of those darker fruits on this one um, really kind of change the profile of of a bourbon sidecar. Um, so if you guys ever get a chance to have a bourbon sidecar, uh, if they have Old Forester eighteen ninety seven bottle and bond, make sure you guys put that in there. I promise you, you will not regret it. So I want to thank you guys for tuning into this episode of Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews and showing you my top five bottled and bond bourbons I am drinking right now. So guys, along with those tasting notes I provided, I also provided you um, a list of cocktails that all of these bottled and bond bourbons hold up very well in. Um, I did test each one of these in different uh, cocktails and the ones that I provided you, I think um, uh, based on the flavor profile, these held up the best. Um, Again, go out and try them um, in each one of those cocktails. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. And if you guys are looking for more reviews like this, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be alerted of any upcoming reviews or live streams. 
You can also find me on Instagram at Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews. And until next time, guys, stay dusty.